Hi, welcome to this short video discussing what is mechanisms-based research. My name is Chad Cook, and I'm a professor at Duke University. I am one of the principal investigators of ForceNet, which is an NIH-funded U24. If you're wondering if you should watch this video, you certainly should if you are interested in general force-based manipulation research. If you're going to be submitting to one of our pilot U24 grants, or any of the other U24 pilot grants from the other two U24 groups, you should also watch this video. And lastly, if you're fleshing out your pilot grant idea and you're wondering if it fits the boundaries of our research, this should help as well. We have four primary objectives with ForceNet. First, we will be providing pilot funding for the next five years for force-based manipulation studies. We also will be creating an interdisciplinary network of force-based investigators. We will be providing training initiatives, especially for new investigators, but also for familiar investigators that are transitioning to mechanism-based research. And lastly, we hope to disseminate some of the better work that's been performed in force-based mechanisms. If you're wondering what the term mechanisms means, it essentially reflects the steps or the processes through which an intervention or a treatment actually unfolds and produces the change in an outcome variable. In other words, these are research studies that discuss how an intervention works, not if an intervention works. That's something you would see in a randomized trial. A mechanism study actually looks at how that particular intervention actually works and influences the body. You'll hear some laypersons term this as a specific effect. The NIH defines mechanism studies as designed to understand a biological or behavioral process, the pathophysiology of a disease, or the mechanism of action of an intervention. In our particular U24, we are interested in the mechanism of action of an intervention. In contrast, the NIH defines a clinical trial as a study in which one or more human subjects are prospectively assigned to one or more interventions to evaluate the effects of those interventions on health-related biomedical or behavioral outcomes. Typically, those involve patient-reported instruments, and those are not the focus of our U24. If you look at the differences side by side between mechanisms research and clinical research, we know that most mechanisms research is performed in a laboratory or as a phase one research trial. In contrast, clinical research tends to be phase two to phase four. Mechanisms research generally involves animals, but it can involve humans, whereas clinical research involves humans only. And the outcomes of a mechanism-based research study tends to involve things such as serum levels of various factors, imaging, forces measured, stiffness, and certain contextual factors. Clinical outcome studies are those that are the same as what are gathered in clinical practice. They tend to be patient-reported outcomes measures. They may be related to costs of care or even patient experience. These pictures help understand what types of outcomes measures are used in mechanism studies. We look at imaging studies. They are more laboratory-based. This is what we're looking for in our U24 pilot submissions. You may want to pause this video because we've actually placed this language also on our RFA that these are the types of mechanisms we're actually looking for for submission of our pilot grants. Some examples of research questions involving mechanisms research are the following three. Is there a difference in thrust manipulation versus non-thrust mobilization in modulation of plasma level inflammatory cytokines? That would be the mechanism in humans with low back pain. Or how does the use of acupressure influence the activation of glial cells and the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor? Glial cells 
and the BDNF would be the mechanism studied in that particular study. Lastly, does massage modulate peripheral blood mononuclear cells or serum cortisol? Those two would be the mechanisms in humans or animal models. I cannot emphasize enough that outside of psychological research studies that investigate force-based manipulations in a contextual factors model, we will not be accepting any submissions in which the primary outcome measure is a patient reported outcome measure. For example, the PROMISE tools are all patient reported outcomes measures, and they would not qualify for this grant submission. So you may ask, how important is, if, is the primary objective of being a mechanism? We will only accept submissions in which the primary outcome is the measurement of a mechanism. And we will only allow submissions in which the primary um, overall intervention is a force-based manipulation. We will fund force-based manipulation studies that look at mechanisms associated with contextual factors of psycho uh, psychological distress, but I would recommend that you reach out to either Dr. Reed or myself to discuss your research idea before submitting that. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email us at these two contact numbers or call. Thank you so much for your interest, and we hope you consider submitting to Forcenet.